Adam Lopez, thanks so much for coming on. You're one of the youngest guests we have ever had at age 25. You're an entrepreneur, you're doing all these kinds of stuff, and so I wanted to have you on to pick your brain about what it is that you're doing. We should say that you're from Naugatuck. Yes. You travel a lot. Mm. You, you're writing a book. Yes. Let's start with, you're growing up in Naugatuck. Yes. Uh, you go to college, or you try to. Briefly, What yes. happens? Um, I went to college back in 2007, went to the University of Hartford for one year, um, had my freshman fun there and decided that college really wasn't my cup of tea. Ended up leaving University of Hartford the next year enrolling in a local community college, which I stayed for a whopping four days Then decided just to- Just uh, four days? Four days, that was it. That's, I felt like I did my time there and I just couldn't do it anymore. And so what happens? College is not for you and you decide to start off on your own path. What is that path? That path is pretty much just figuring out uh, Going into college, especially rolling, enrolling into University of Hartford, it was very tough because I went in as a general education major. So I didn't even know what I wanted to do at that point. You know, I knew I loved music. I'd played in bands when I was younger, as a teenager. And um, really at that point, just decided that I wanted to do music after I left both colleges. That really brought it to the forefront. So we should say that you are a talent manager. Yes. You're only 25 years old. Yes. How did this start? And how do people trust you with their career at your age? It's very difficult. Uh, it's a very, very competitive field and there are a lot of young talent managers out there, which is great because especially with social media and all the stuff that is really taking over, a lot of the younger generation is really hands-on with that stuff and they're very, you know, very well versed in it. So that's kind of where everything started. You know, people really want people with their ear to the ground, you know, especially kids like this. Who's the first person that trusted you? A group of friends, actually. Uh, I used to play in a band many years ago, probably now eight years ago, and I ended up leaving the band. I used to play drums, ended up leaving the band, and I was like, hey guys, listen, let me take you on as a management client. I was like, I know how this stuff works. I'd always been far more fascinated with the business side of things than, as, than the performing side of things. So they were like, yeah, let's do it. All right, so we, we start this management business. Yes. You have three to six people that you're managing? As of right now, yes. And what does that entail? Pretty much everything, um, everything from press to touring stuff to- How do you know how to do this at 25? Uh, it, was, it's a, it's a, it was a very long three years, trust me. Uh, I made a very, made a ton of mistakes, got a ton of stuff right, luckily. But you know, it's a, it's a balance. It's a beautiful balance. All right, so where are you gonna take this? 25 years old, you're gonna take this, you're gonna do this your whole life? I'd like to, yes. You're into social media. Yes. You're into charity, so you're building a company that gives back. And you started something um, called Fans for Cans. Yes. This goes back. What were you doing with that? Pretty much what we would do is I had this little concept floating around one night just poking around on my laptop. And I decided to, I was like, hey, you know, let's see if we can get more people behind this. What we did was we created a Twitter handle. Um, I believe it was at Fans for Cans. And I put up in the bio, I put for every follower that this account gets, I will personally donate one canned good to a local soup kitchen. Which and is an awesome idea. It was really cool. And it's because a lot of these, you know, that was also when Twitter, Twitter was on the rise. So a lot of people were into it. Uh, it got a decent amount of traction, which I was very, very surprised. And then um, kind of took it from there and just donated a bunch of cans, got a bunch of followers, fortunately. And uh, that's where it is. So you are writing a book now called No Smoking in the Green Room. Yes. And the cover is right here. What is that about? It's pretty much about coming from leaving two colleges, pretty much what everything that I went through up to present day. It goes through the business side of things, the emotional side of things, uh, tours, girlfriends, parties, everything you can imagine in the past pretty much four years, three, four years of my life that got it here, especially the shift in the music industry paradigm going from you know, CDs becoming antiquated to you know, all the, what everything is now, you know, which is still changing daily and pretty much taking it from the beginning all the way to where I am now. How do you have time to write a book when you're busy with all these careers? I mean, how, and how does one go about that? I keep going back to your age, but you're, <laughs> you're doing everything, you're throwing everything up at the wall yeah. and seeing where all of this goes. It's, it's, and this is your generation, by the way. This is, absolutely. This is what folks your age are doing. You know, you, you harness social media, you get your name out there, you brand yourself, in your case, you're branding other people. Yes. And it, anything can happen now because so many things are broken. That is very true, that is very true. Uh, when it came to the book, I wanted to go into college originally as a creative writing major, which I had to get through my gen ed classes first, my general education classes first, and then I was like, yeah, I'll go into creative writing. 
clearly didn't make it that far. So one day, you know, a couple of years, a couple years ago, I was like, you know what? When I was younger, when I was probably 15 to 17, I had a big, not big, but like I updated a little internet journal slash blog before blogs were really cool. And just no one read it. It was kind of just for me, you know, and maybe some of my high school friends read it, but I documented pretty much everything from like 2004 to 2007. And I went back and ended up reading that like a couple of years ago. And I was like, man, like it's so crazy to see how far I've come from this state, you know, in 2005 as to where I am now in 2013. And I was kind of like, you know what, I want to compile this and take it even further. And I just woke up and I was like, I'm going to put it in a book. What does the title mean? The title is funny because it's kind of ironic because typically in a green room, you can pretty much do whatever you want, especially when it comes to musicians or artists, you know, a ton of crazy things happen in a green room. But we were at a venue um, one day and a friend of mine was smoking a cigarette in the green room and the, the production manager came in and he was like, hey, listen, you can't smoke in here. And then there was kind of like this exchange of like, well, there's been tons of things done in this green room and I can't smoke a cigarette in here. So it's kind of funny. It's kind of just like people telling you no, but you're going to do it anyway. What can we learn from your generation about how you're going about getting this book out there? Because you're asking folks for money to get it out there. And tell I was. Me, you were, but mm. and how did you do that? And because we were talking about in my generation, yeah. it was very impolite to ask people for money. Mm. But with Indiegogo and Kickstarter and yep. some of these other um, platforms you can sign up on, you're saying, I'm going to give you this if you'll help me build something new, which is what you did. Absolutely, yeah. I went through Indiegogo. And I pretty much just put it out there as a passion project. You know, I was kind of like, hey, I'm going to put this, I'm going to throw this at the wall and see what happens. I've been wanting to do this for a while. If anyone, you know, from, you know, my clients, fans to like my friends of mine to family, I was like, hey, if you guys want to help bring this passion project to life, you know, here's a link. Here's, you know, I had a bunch of great people, like a bunch of industry friends submit, you know, testimonials and stuff. And I was like, hey, guys, listen, just push this to your social media following network. Tell anyone you can. And fortunately, it got funded. How much money did you get from folks you didn't even know? Most of it came from folks I didn't know, honestly. People that I know through social media or, you know, people that I've met maybe once or twice personally or people who, because randomly on Twitter one day I tweeted a link to the, the old blog that I had way back in the day. And a lot of people were like, hey, you should like turn this into a book or you're a great writer, this and that. So a lot of people like that donated, the very few who read the old blog. But it came from a lot of different outlets. So several thousand dollars you got? Uh, a little less. Who's going to publish this book? Self-publishing? Where are you taking it? We're probably going to self-publish it as of right now. Okay. So um, we've had a lot of great people help out with it, you know, um, and it's probably going to be self-published until, you know, if it, if it sells well, if it does great, then, you know, we'll cross the bridge and we get to it. But right now, I'm not even worried about that. As a talent manager, who are you looking to represent and how do you find these young up-and-comers? It's really just someone that you can work with and you feel like you can connect with musically. You know, it's, um, we work with a lot of people, you know, we work, we work with people who, you know, have already been through the mill, you know, have been picked up and dropped from labels, you know, stuff like picked up by new labels. We work what with, labels these days, right? Yeah, exactly. Make your own label. So, yeah, pretty much. So you know, we work with a vast array of artists, but pretty much anyone who has this immense passion, anyone who I see a little bit of myself in as well, you know, people who are just willing to go all out and work countless hours a week, you know, never sleep and just work really, really hard towards what their goal is, that's pretty much who we look for. All right, so your proudest moment so far as a talent manager? Give me an example. That's of, a tough one. Of, I mean, you said to me that folks are really relying on you. They want to do their craft. They want to do their music. Mm. You have to make sure there's food on the table. That is true. And there's not, not a lot of money to be made when you're up and coming. You're playing bars, barns. Very small venues. Very yeah. small, whatever you can do. Mm. So you have a lot of pressure on your shoulders right now as a talent yes. manager, as a young kid. Absolutely. So, Proudest moment that you've sort of made happen, or biggest venue that you got some Proudest, in? I'd have to say proudest moment probably. Um, this time last year, I was over in Italy with a client of mine, and it was kind of wild because I was sitting by a pool in Rome, and I was thinking, I was like, oh my God, I'm here with a client. I was like, I, I was like, everything I've done for the past few years has led me to here. And I'm sitting by this beautiful pool, you know, in Rome with the Colosseum in the background, and I was like, man, this is really something that, you know, you, if you work hard, obviously, you know, you can do great things. And that was really my, like, kind of, like, oh my God moment right there. Is there somebody that you are emulating? Is there some talent manager out there that you want to be like as you go on through this? There are tons of fantastic talent managers. Um, you know, the original, one of the, the biggest, you know, as an A&R talent manager, uh, David Geffen, there's Scooter Braun, Troy Carter. Um, there's a ton of fantastic talent managers like that have been and, you know, that are out now. So, and have, Simon Cowell. Have you Cowell, tried to get a meeting with these guys? Um, that would be your biggest move right there. Yeah, that's, to talk that, to Simon Cowell. That's true. Yeah, Simon Cowell is a huge, huge influence. You know, he's just he's absolutely fantastic, and he gets a really bad rap doing all the, the American Idol stuff. But I mean, 
he's a, a creative genius. You know, he does a lot of he does a lot of really great stuff that nobody gets to see except the people you know within the industry. As a young entrepreneur, what kind of advice would you give for other? I guess you're a millennial. Will I suppose a yeah. millennial? <laughs> What advice do you have? Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs in this day and age, they're exhausted. Yep. They're living passions, all ton of passions all at the same time. Yeah. What advice do you give to somebody who's trying to get from A to B? And I know you're not sleeping much, because that's, that's not what you do. That's pretty much what it is, but, yeah. But mistakes you've made and, and good things that you've done along the way. Pretty much you just have to keep going. That's really what it is. I mean, there have been days where like, you know, you don't want to get up and you're like, oh man, I have an inbox full of stuff. Or there's some days where the worst days are when no one is calling you, the phone's not ringing, you know, there's no email showing up and you're like, you have to just, you know, get out of bed and just make those things happen, you know, which is really crazy. And that's why in a, 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 an old client of mine put it the absolute best way. He goes, don't worry about the money. He's like, the money will come. He goes, money is simply a byproduct of success. If you're successful, the money will follow. So, I mean, if you're getting out of bed every day, you know, and you have this passion, but really you're just doing it to make a lot of money because you feel like that's what makes sense, you're going to end up giving up on it at some point if the money doesn't come within your desired time frame. That's great advice. Adam Lopez, great success is going to come your way. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me.